Hello everyone, and welcome to Blacktooth Woodworking. I'm Nate, and today I'm going to go over how I turned an ordinary uh, USB keypad, external keypad, into a pendant controller for my Bob CNC E4, all within Universal G Code Sender. So let's bring the camera in a little closer and get started. All right, so once you have everything set up, I do have the keypad plugged in to the computer. Now I have a wired one, um, but you could very easily use a wireless uh, USB uh, controller as well. Luckily my cable reaches to the CNC, so maybe at some point I'll get a, a wireless one, but this will work. I also have Universal G-Code Sender uh, open. I do have the router plugged into the laptop and it's on. I do not have the router itself plugged in uh, just for safety reasons. We don't, don't need to have the router running uh, to be able to do this. So it is not connected yet through Universal G-Code Sender, um, which isn't necessary at this point. Uh, in order to set this up. So what you wanna do is go up to the tools uh, menu at the top and then go down to options. Now, the first time you open this, it might be on the general tab over here on the left. Uh, so what we want to select is key map. Now here's all of the available options you have uh, to set up your shortcuts. Um, so you have the actions here on the left hand side You have the shortcuts here in the middle and then the category over here on the right now What we want is down here everything that's labeled machine Under the category we will also use a few of the overrides uh, here and that is for um, your feed rate Override so I know a lot of people um, myself included like to Start uh, conservative with the feed rate and then while the CNC is running you can um, adjust the speed up and down um, You know based on the wood and bit and and whatever you're carving so we will use a few of these here now I've done a lot of these already um, testing them out however I decided that I wanted to add another one, um, and that is, you know, I don't know how necessary it's going to be for me, uh, but the connect and disconnect, um, there is an option um, to set a key for that as well. So basically what we're doing here, and I will go through um, the ones that I've done here, Here's connect, so I have done it, but if I click on this, I can reset that to default, which gets rid of that, and then I can hit apply down here at the bottom. Now, if I were to, I had that set up as the um, secondary function of the play, so if you're not used to one of the, the num lock key, you have a little light right here uh, that if, you push that num lock. If the light is on, uh, you're getting the numbers basically. With the num lock key uh, light off, you're getting the secondary um, options for the keys. Um, now, because I put stickers on all of mine, I don't know what they are exactly, but I know the play button is also an insert, um, is the secondary the um, Z minus, that's your right arrow, left arrow, up and down arrows, etc. So uh, with the num lock on, that would be six. With it off, that's the right arrow. So with this off, now I wanna make sure that this is off first before I change anything in there because look what happens if I go in here. So we're going to do the connect um, action. Now there's this little box with three dots. If you s click on it, you get this drop down menu. Uh, right now we want to edit. 
and that'll open up the shortcut window here. Now, if I already, if I didn't have the numlock set where I wanted it, if I push it now, it adds numlock in there, numpad zero. That's not, that's not what I want. So if we backspace out of that, and then just select somewhere else so it's not selected, go back. Now, I'll turn off the numlock so the light is not on. Now, you can see it open up this window for me. Um, so now if I hit the play button, it actually inserts insert. That is the function, the secondary function of the zero key. Then all I need to do is just select out of that and that now apply that shortcut to that action. And then don't forget to hit apply. Now you can go through all of them and then hit apply or you know, if you forget, hit apply after each one. The home machine I have as the divide. So that's this key here. Um, I have, this is what I felt like I would need. Um, obviously you can do it in whatever order you want, however it makes sense to you. So at the top here, I have the home, I have set zero, and I have go to zero. So set zero will set zero for X, Y, and Z. It sets it for all three. Uh, then the next row I have X plus, so that moves it along the X axis in a positive direction, Y, Z, and then on the right over here I have the X, Y step increase, so I can increase the increments um, that the spindle will move along the X and Y axis, axes. Uh, then it's the uh, negative X, Y, Z, and then also decrease the X, Y step. Um, then I have feed negative, so I can reduce the feed. Uh, feed reset, and then increase the feed rate. Over here I have the stop button, and then down at the bottom, pause and play. All these stickers I made with our Cricut machine. Um, my wife convinced me to just do it and not be so picky about it, but I like to, I like things to be nice and pretty, even if it's shop equipment. I didn't want white stickers, but obviously, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't look that bad. So now I have three of these, well, four, including the play button, uh, that have a secondary function using the numlock key. And that is this, uh, increase Z step, decrease Z step, and set Z zero. So I don't use these that often. I usually have the Z step um, increment, um, how do you say it? Pretty, uh, pretty low increments, I guess, um, because I don't want to hit Z down and have it go, you know, jamming into the piece of wood. So it's usually set pretty low. But uh, the set Z zero would be important if you're doing um, a multiple uh, things that the X and Y zero won't change. But you need it like changing, uh, changing out your bits. If you use multiple bits on a project, you know, you, your X and Y aren't going to change. That's going to be zero no matter what. But you change your bit, that second bit might be a little lower than the first one or a little higher. So you'll want to reset your Z zero. Uh, so that's why I have that as well. And then uh, like I just went over my home button, even though I don't have uh, it typed out, the secondary function will be connect, which it really doesn't matter if it's not written out. I know what that is. So basically what you're doing here is you're finding the action you want to assign a shortcut to. Home machine, here is the decrease XY step size. Here is the decrease Z step size. Now you can see this is page down, which is 
the secondary function of this key right here. As you can see, I just went page down, page up. Um, now, when you go in here, you might run into an issue where, uh, let's divide feed rate by 10, let's edit that, and let's, um, let's try adding uh, page down. Now, I already have a page down, right? So if you select out of here, it'll give you a warning dialog saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, you've already, there's already a, an assignment for this, so there's a conflict with the new assignment. Do you wish to remove the old one? Obviously, I don't. I want to keep that. Um, so uh, when I was doing this the first time, a lot of these keys were already assigned. Now I'm using this primarily for UGS, for my CNC. I'm not doing um, any typing. I'm not doing any other real functions in here that I'm going to need uh, those keys. So it was fine with me to override like the enter key. Now that one was giving me some grief because if I go in here and select edit and I just hit enter, see it just it doesn't doesn't let you so what I found was if I edit then it gives you a little triangle drop down if you select that again now you get these options so I can use the tab key a wheel up wheel down here's the enter key so if you click on that it puts enter in there and that will assign it to the enter key I don't want that uh, because I already have it assigned. <clears throat> but that's how I assigned the enter key, um, which was pretty simple. So once all of your assignments are done, um, here's X plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus. Uh, the pause button, it was the decimal point um, on the keypad here. So let me turn on the... Um, num lock so then these are the lights on so now it's the um, num lock options there uh, so once all of these are done and then down here is where you will find the overrides for um, I have the numpad 3 for override um, feed override increase the feed and then decrease the feed and feed reset you also have um i opted for the uh it goes by 10 the double plus sign is by 10 percent the single plus or minus is one percent so i won't ever do a one percent increase or decrease so i opted for the 10 percent you also have um, your rapid overrides are down here. Your spindle overrides are down here. Um, but everything is right there in your override. So once that is done, you would click apply. Okay. And then everything should be done. So to test it, we are going to make sure that I'm selected at the right com. Now I can hit the num lock key so that the light goes off. That lets me know I'm doing the secondary function of these. And if I hit connect, you can see that it connected. Now obviously it comes up with that safety alarm. So then I can hit the num lock key again so that the light comes on. Now with the keys that don't have secondary functions already it does not matter if the num lock is on or off so if it's off and i press home it's going to home the machine because that button doesn't have another option for it so not just home the machine but having said that i like to turn the num lock back on so that i know i'm not hitting accidentally you know a, a z step or set Z zero or anything like that. Um, so then 
let me set up another camera so that I can be pressing these and I'll try and show you um, the what the, the uh, router's doing at that time. Okay, so let's give this a try. So now that the router uh, is connected, um, everything's good, um, we will, uh, we've honed the machine, so now we got rid of the alarm. So now uh, let's pretend like we need to go set our X and Y zero. So by pressing the X, I am moving the, uh, the CNC down the X positive. You can also hold it down. Uh, let's go to about there. Move the Y in the positive direction. Move it there. Um, now let's say I, I didn't want to um, go that slow. So what I can do is if I hit my increase X, Y step, what I'm doing down here, I know you probably can't see it, but right down here, I'm increasing the step size of X and Y. So now it's at 0 0.1 inch. So now that's a larger uh, increment. However, be careful about holding that down when it's on a larger increment because if you could tell, I released a button, but because it had saved however long I held the button, it's still gonna keep moving until it stops. You can really run into some issues with that if your workpiece is in the way, if you have something um, there, you know, I would not recommend holding it down that long uh, if you have a, a large increment. So let's drop that back down. Now as a side note, one thing I have noticed, and I'm, I don't know if it's just uh, the nature of the beast, uh, but the lowest I can go, the smallest increment I can go by using um, this keypad is 0 0.01 inches. Now for my Z, now for X and Y, that's fine. But my Z step, I want that smaller than that even because I want to get right down and, you know, just kiss the, the surface of the workpiece. And a 0 0.01 is too large. So what I would normally do is use the interface here and just select that um, 0, 0, 005 or whatever. And like I said before, I'm not really using that a whole lot. All right, so I was interrupted there. My wife came in and needed a hammer. And I don't remember what I was talking about. I think it was the step size of the Z axis. I always keep that at a lower increment so I'm not um, in danger of ramming my bit down into the work surface. So I, I don't use those too much, um, which is why they are set as a secondary um, function. So now that we've moved the router where our X and Y is, um, I can uh, move the Z down. Error, while pressing response, error detected. Jog is, exceeds machine travel. So, Oh, it's because it's 66,660.00. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Um, let's... .005. All right. Let us try that again. So if I go Z down, there we go. I'll move the Z and I'm looking over there because I do have a bit in the machine. Let's put our Z right there. So now that we have our uh, bit set up where um, our starting point is going to be for the carve, which is normally for me the lower left hand corner. 
Now what I can do is hit the set zero and you can see that they all reset themselves to zero. So now that I've set the zero, when I start a project, before I turn the router on, I actually raise the Z up a little bit. That way it's not touching the surface of the wood when I start the router bit. Um, and then uh, you would go ahead and hit the play button. Now I will load up a uh, cut file here um, just to show you the stop and pause and, and the feed rate there. Uh, but let's, uh, let's rehome the machine and then I will go back to zero and it should take us right back to our X, Y, and zero, or X, Y, and Z zero points. And there it is. So those work. Um, let me, now if I went, I know you probably can't see this over here, but my feed, you always, We'll make sure that that is selected. The feed is selected. Um, the feed rate right now is 100%. If I hit the negative, the feed decrease, now it's at 90, 80, 70. I can increase it back to 80. Uh, let's say I want to reset it to 100%. Just hit feed reset and it resets it to 100%. So let's open a file. Let's just do, these are the files that I use for the, um, let's open that one. For my X and Y uh, braces. So I think I post a picture of those on um, my Instagram and Facebook pages. Uh, so I have a cut file up. I'm at zero. So everything's at zero. Let me increase my step size or in, raise up the, the spindle. I'm not gonna turn the router on obviously, but we are all ready to go. We've double checked everything. Workpiece is secure. We're gonna hit the play button. Now, if somebody can tell me if this is a safety procedure here or if something else is going on but every single time that I hit the play on no, no matter what cut file I have open it always holds first I have to hit play again or send again before it actually starts the process now that could be a safety thing uh, similar to connecting um, and then getting that alarm before you home the machine I don't know, but it will not do this if I have my touch probe out and I run the touch probe script, you know, program. As soon as I hit the play button, it goes. So I don't know if this is just because it's a cut file or what, but if anybody has any insight on that, please let me know. Uh, it's fine that it's a safety thing. That's okay. You know, making sure you really want to start this thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm just not, I'm not certain. So let's go ahead and play that. So now it's moving around and, uh oh, I need to, I need to pause um, as it moves up to the next step. Ah, okay, it paused. Very good. Whatever happened, you needed to do something, you know, something was in the way, you hit the pause real fast, but you don't want to stop it because you want to continue where it left off. There we go. Uh-oh, now I see something's in the way. Let's stop the machine. All right, now that worked as well. It's the big button in case I need a, you know, an emergency stop. It's right there, I can hit it. Let's go back and rehome zero. Uh, I think my other camera moved a bit because the cable was in the way. We are going to run that again. Um, and then I will increase and decrease the feed rate while it's moving. <clears throat> so uh, we've homed it. Uh, let's return to zero again. So since I didn't disconnect anything, it still has that saved. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the play. See? There's the hold again. We'll hit play. Uh, all right, so I want the 
That's a 50%. I love the sound of the thing when it's not, when you can actually hear the, the stepper motors running and not the router. Um, okay, we seem to be doing good. Let me increase that. We're back to 100, but I know I'm using a soft wood, you know, a shallow cut. Let's increase that. Now it's really moving. Well, let's just hit reset back to zero. And now let's stop before I crunch the cable for the GoPro again. And let's uh, rehome the machine. So that's all there is really to programming a uh, keypad here uh, to be able to control your CNC. Well, I hope that helped out a few of you um, with questions on how to set up an external keypad to use as a pendant for your CNC. Um, it's a really simple process. Again, just go through the tools, uh, go to the key mapping. It's all right there within Universal, Universal G Code Sender. Uh, no need for extra software or you know additional steps assigning uh, a special key combination and then reassigning that to a, a number button or a keypad. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If you have any tips on the hold situation uh, that you saw there, I'd love to hear them. It, like I said, it could be a, a safety issue. Uh, it's really no big deal, um, but I'm just uh, curious to know. So. That's all I have for that very simple process. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Now let's uh, uh, disconnect it. Very good.